great to have you with us, um, Alex. Could you just share where you were with your hockey as a 12-year-old? Yeah, morning, Jack. Um, as a 12-year-old, I was playing club hockey. Um, I don't think I started playing men's yet. I was playing for Oxford Hockey Club and really enjoying it. I think at 12 years old, I didn't get into the county squad, um, which was a devastating blow at the time. I remember being very, very upset, um, but really, really enjoying um, under 12 and under 14 hockey. Sure. And were you playing other sports as well? Yeah, I played a lot of other sports. So I played loads of football growing up. Um, so I went to a state school. So football was the thing we would do at break and lunch. And we had the odd football fixture for school. So I played loads of football. Um, played that at an OK level, played some kind of mid-county stuff. Um, played lots of tennis in the summer. Um, always did some swimming and athletics um, when I could as well. But football and hockey were always the main ones. And how did you... Well, how did you view hockey at the time and how would people at your school have viewed hockey at the time? <laughs> um, people at my school viewed hockey as very much a girl sport and even my friends would, would try and rinse me for playing it and, you know, and say quite uh, unpleasant things about me playing hockey. Um, I enjoyed it. I was, pretty com- I was fortunate to be quite confident and comfortable with myself. Um, I had a good group of friends at my hockey club, but there was no hockey at school. Um, we didn't do any hockey at school and it was perceived to be quite a negative thing, very uncool thing. So I didn't talk about it at school, to be honest, didn't ever come up, even with like my best friends. Um, even now with my schoolmates, it's not really something we talk about, to be honest. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, hide it away a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it did, feel like that. it did feel like it was kind of something which was hid away. Um, but yeah. Mm. And then just like as you got a little bit older, do you do you remember like getting into county for the first time? She said you didn't. Um, you know. I, I don't really remember that first season, but I did get in the next year. So I guess under 13. I really enjoyed county. I, there was a lot of guys who I'd obviously played with and against at club level. Um, so I knew them really well. And then the five, yeah, five years played at county were really good fun. Um my biggest memory of County was a bit later on, under-17, when we won the County Champs with Oxfordshire. Um, if, uh, yeah, I don't remember huge amounts of those early years, to be honest, but they were quite positive experience, had good coaches. They were like mates, dads, um, and that was good fun. It felt like a... I do remember feeling like a big step up at the time when I was younger playing County, and it was a nice, you know, new stretch. And do you remember... So I think I'm not sure what age you were... Um, in terms of what we have in a hockey system was set up there. Yeah. But did you like, did you do the old like JRPC structure or Midland structure? Can you just talk us through that journey a little bit when you were like yeah. 15 and 16? Um, so JRPC is, I, so I don't know what age it would have been, maybe 14, but I didn't get into the JRPCs the first year, um, which again, was quite upset about, I was quite disappointed. I felt like I could have, should have, but um, that was what it was. Then I did three or, Three years, I think. Four years, JRPCs. Um, to be honest, I didn't love them. Um, I it, We had to travel so far for a lot of them. And the coaches, it seemed like the coaches had their favourites and they knew specific groups of mm-hmm. players' names. And it was quite obvious those were going to go through and you weren't in that group. It was quite tough um, and it's quite cliquey. So I, it wasn't a great... Um, had to be quite resilient and get on with it and, um, and you know, try and show what you can do in a kind of trial and uh, performance environment. Um, I got to the tier two in my last year. So I don't know when, if that would have been 16, um, which I think was the Mercy Link stuff. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. So you, when you were under 18, you got to be... Under 18. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so I think then I would have been... 16 or 17 because I was um young for the year so that that was okay um but like I wasn't at the level to go any higher than that that was probably my best experience was getting through to that that was a good group of guys um a bit more matey a bit less cliquey um but yeah the JRPC stuff for me was mixed like there was some years I was like I don't even know if it's worth going um which I think was a bit of a shame um, my mum always made me go which you know on reflection I'm grateful for uh, her having pushed me out the door um, but yeah 
I think it's, I think I hope it's better now than than my experience was. And then, what was your? How did your club hockey develop? So you were, you know, we talked about when you was it Oxford and you were at Oxford, yeah, Oxford. So like Oxford, you were at, and then um, how, how did it develop between the ages of? You know, yeah, so I I played. I think I started when I was seven or something playing hockey, and then played juniors till twelve. Well, I played juniors all the way up to 18, but then I think when I was 13, I started playing men's. So I started playing in development sides, which were incredible. Um, and I think that those development sides are fantastic. You know, badger size or fledging size, whatever they're called. For me, that was awesome. It was a real good education, both on and off the pitch. You know, you learn a huge amount um, playing with older guys. And that was the team I played, and I was so fortunate. It was a very supportive and caring environment. They encouraged me to run with the ball, to try new things, to make mistakes. Um, and that was fantastic. So I probably had a couple of years of playing development side before I then, um, I didn't really work my way up the teams. I kind of then got thrown into the ones and twos quite quickly at um, maybe 15. Um, and then I had a few years with the ones, which was really good. And I, again, I was really fortunate. There was probably a core group of guys who were, 24 25 and very supportive and would be very much get me involved and wanted to get me out for dinner and beers afterwards which again was very good fun and you know a huge education um before going to university and and something i'm grateful for and people i'm still close with and would love to catch up with today um but that was huge development for me it made me um, a much better player because all of a sudden i've gone from just trying to do everything for myself and run around for players at a junior level you try that at men's level when you're a bit younger, they just whack you and sit you down. Um, so I had to learn quite quickly, certainly got much more smart, uh, more streetwise. And and that was a really, really good education. Um, and just potentially had to be a bit braver and gain confidence for certain to, to know that I could play in, in men's teams and high levels. And did it help you think playing adult hockey quite young? And yeah, your, your main experience always being adult hockey, basically your main development experience. Yeah, definitely. I think um, that was huge for me. So I know lots of my friends, um, even at university, to be honest, some of them hadn't played men's hockey and they look so weak and soft. Um, and I think it's a different brand of hockey. For me, playing men's hockey was fantastic. And that that, that came quite early for me was really, really positive. And I encourage um, you know, juniors, boys and girls to, to get involved with, with senior hockey um, as soon as they, they feel able to because it was really, really good. I think it was really good fun as well. That was certainly where I got my love and kept my love um, of hockey for once I got into that because it was a different environment. You know, loads of these guys are just playing for fun um, as well as some who have this more performance element. Um, so that was a really, really big learning curve for me was playing men's hockey. And fortunately for me, being able to stay with the same core of players for uh, probably three years, maybe four years, was, was really positive as well. Yeah, it's, what do you find like the difference in the environment between, say, being a, say that Oxford, we call it like a mid-tier club? It's not really small, is it? But it's not, like, not quite a national league club and bigger club. And being in like a JRPC environment, like what was the difference in terms of the, you know, like culture, the coaching? So I think it's a really interesting question because, you know, it can often be set up in one way. Yeah, I think um, I think Oxford has some amazing coaches in terms of the the kind of the entry level guys, so the guys who are there to really inspire and enthuse kids. Um, you know, I can think of. Nick Molden and late Roy Williams, who are fantastic at making people love hockey. And I probably owe a lot to them. Um, I don't, then when we worked out, we did have a couple of performance coaches at Oxford, um, who, you know, obviously were trying to get the club higher. I, I think at JRPC, it, it felt, I don't know, there wasn't really much enjoyment there. Um, it felt like a kind of predetermined outcome when I was there in that you kind of knew who was going to get through based on whether the coaches knew them or not. Now, I hope that's not me being bitter because I, I didn't have any success there. You know, that's, that was my experience. And um, whereas at club, it felt more relaxed and it was people cared about your development. I don't think there was as much focus on development as at JRPC. It was kind of 
we need to pick our top 20 or top 16, whatever it was. Um, I just, I really enjoyed the, the men's side um, and, and the social element was a part of that as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and obviously like, you know, from we're at similar age and JRPC was different in our day to what PC is yeah. now. And I think there's been lots of, you know, progress made in that area. Um, yeah. And I think, mean, you know, you, you did make it to future. So it wasn't like you were, you know, this complete outcast, you never got a look in at all. You, you know, you saw one who, who did pretty well in the system, in a way. Um, so it's interesting to hear those comments. When, when you, you know, because you, you're doing, especially when you got to Futures, it's quite, it's quite a lot of hockey, you know, it's three or four days away from home and, um, you know, the club hockey's probably taking up a reasonable amount of time. How did you balance that with, like, social life and, and what you were doing at school, academically? I don't to be honest, I don't know if for me there was much balance with schoolwork at the time. It was like, right, sports in, school's out, um, <laughs> which is not how I'd necessarily encourage people. I'm a teacher now, it's not how I'd encourage my people to do that. It's not how I'd encourage people. Um, but I think you have to recognise, you know, and, and prioritise what's important. So the, these few days, these trials, whatever it is, that's, that's happening right now. That's not going to happen again, maybe ever or, or for a while. You have to give that your all. So for me things certainly took a back seat and it was like right I'm probably not going to go to a party and realistically I'm not going to do any work school work for a while because that's what I'm focused on now if I was to do that now I'd probably try and have more balance I'd probably try and be a bit more organized and say right I've got this coming up I need to get um, my affairs in order and sort out you know whatever it is deadlines that coming up before then and be organized to make sure I then can focus on those that big game or a few days or you know whatever it is week away pre-season camp um at the time though it was just right sport mm-hmm. hockey that's what we're doing um did, you, like, did your school give you any support like when you got to futures or like there was anyone who could like you know have the arm around the shoulder give you a bit of advice or no um i was I had some I had some amazing teachers at school um you know a few teachers i'll always be very grateful for but there wasn't anything like that no. Sure. But, you know, it's often it's the case when you, you know, if you don't go to a more hockey dominated school. Mm. Um, but, you know, thanks for your honesty as well with um, the balance. And I suppose as a teacher now, you've <laughs> yeah, <I see. laughs> you learned a lot so you can share the wisdom with your uh, pupils. Yeah. Um, so, like one big part of this interview is you really wanted to focus on your journey post 18 because you've had like a, a really amazing journey in terms of your development from when you were 18 to where you, you know, are now scoring goals at a high level of hockey. Um, so, so post 18, like what happened with your yeah, so life and with your hockey? I, yeah, I think for me, kind of 12 to 18, I had maybe a similar journey to a lot of people, um, you know, played county, played regional, played club, um, didn't quite crack it as a lot of people. I think I know a lot of my friends then kind of went to uni and just wanted to play a bit of fun hockey or play a bit of fun sport. and um maybe relax a bit I went to uni at Texter and as you know absolutely loved it had an incredible incredible three years and fully bought into the, the culture of the hockey club there which which was sensational and it was a performance culture and I absolutely loved that um at the time Nick Besant was there um he was obviously amazing Maka was there Tyson um obviously still is there as well and actually I think one of the most important coaches for me um was Beef so strength conditioning coach because I think he absolutely um laid into that the importance of performance around the clock and he was so focused on getting better and I, I really bought into that and I love that so um although I, I did love the social element of hockey and and uni and very much got stuck into that I enjoyed trying to get better and I started um my hockey in the second team at Exeter and then I got dropped to the third team in my first year um and actually like I had some fourth year at that time come up to me and say, well, you're in the third team now, that's probably where you're going to be for the next three years. Um, and I kind of thought, well, actually, that's not what I want. I want to play National League. I want to play for the ones. Um, and I worked really hard. You know, I went away in the off-season, did lots of running and was in the gym, came back second year. And, you know, then I was playing consistently National League in, in my first year, um, which was really, really exciting for me. And actually, it was, that was from that, performance element kind of becoming embedded in me and actually thinking yeah I do want to I want to see 
if I can play National League, I want to push myself. Um, and you know, then to get get that National League, those National League games at the, at the Nando's Arena was was incredible, um, and and an amazing experience to to be part of that. But I think that performance culture, I, I absolutely bought in and got swept up in, and and something I'm still very grateful for today. And when you say that performance culture, what do you mean by that? Like, what what was the training like, and what was yeah. the you know almost like the atmosphere like? Yeah, I think like when I saw the first team guys when I arrived, like they just looked so good at hockey. So you're looking at these guys, and I was a way off being at that level, and I was like, okay, I want to play that level. I want to aspire to be them. And then you know, over time, those guys became friends as well, which. So you're watching your mates playing, you're like, I want to be there. I think the the motto when I arrived at least was excellence on and off the pitch. Um, and I guess that just stuck with me kind of, you know, not going out before games and doing your stuff in the gym and doing your running, getting to training 10 minutes early to make the most of training and, you know, things like that and trying to be really diligent. So I think we came from the top down. So uh, as you know, Maka was, wouldn't settle for anything above, you know, your best effort. and. Nick Pheasant was incredible at, I think, creating that performance culture, which started with the ones and worked its way down. And, and the way it worked, Exeter, with, you know, obviously Tyson was coaching the twos, who is, is now coaching the ones and an incredible coach in his own right. You then had first team boys coaching the threes, um, first team or second team boys coaching the fours. And so those, those messages were shared all the way through the club, even though guys in the sixes and sevens were obviously much more relaxed and had a different viewpoint and they still when they came to hockey wanted to win and wanted to do well um so that that culture was really important for me and, and something i enjoyed and how did it sort of <laughs> you from a you know maybe a different background to lots of boys actually was it ever like a issue for you or was it like a it was a bonus in a way it was very eye-opening i think uh, yeah. um i knew a couple of guys from JRPC. So Marcus, as you know, one of my best friends now. Um, so that was that was quite nice. But it was really interesting talking to these guys about their hockey experience prior to university because they'd all, well, all make a generalization. Many of them had done hockey at school and had excellent heads of hockeys and they would train, I don't know, four hours a week or whatever. And they they might do summer camps with um, this international or they would, you know, have huge experience. And a lot of the guys who I did play with had also done better than me at the, t- um, at the JRPC stuff and all that as well. So I I was very aware of that. I don't think... I felt like Exeter was quite a clean slate, to be honest. Um, yeah. Yeah. I felt like I was able to um, make my name for myself, regardless of what school I'd been to um, or anything else. Um, so... Where do you think that came from? Because I think it's a, um, you know, it is a really important point because you could go into, you know, like a performance culture at uni and just be like, oh, it's sort of, you know, like JRPC, it's like that same thing all again. Yeah. What, what sort of gave you that feeling next? So that you're like, oh, I can, you know, it's a clean slate. It's like a fresh, yeah. fresh assessment. Good question. Um... I don't know. I think I, I really wanted to go to Exeter um, and a big reason for that was the hockey. Um, I was very fortunate to go down to do a pre-season session um, and kind of b- build some relationship with some of the guys there who in the years above, um, which was a fun um, few days. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe because I wanted it to be. I was very keen for it to be um, a new thing and wanted to, you know, I don't know, create this new identity or, you know, find out a bit more about myself, how far I could take my hockey, what, what type of person I am. So um, I'm not sure, but it, it felt very, uh, it felt fresh. Sure. I mean, like, do you remember your National League debut? So you obviously went two years back to three when you were working your way up the teams? Um, yeah, I think it was against Ferrum at home. Um, and I was so nervous. And I think the first ball got past me and I just... It first touch went miles away and I was like, oh, here we go. And then Maka laid into me. Um, I eventually settled into the game and played played the rest of the season. Um, but yeah, that was very, obviously very nervous moments, but also incredibly exciting. Um, I think it was helpful. There was quite a few guys. Well, there was, I think there's a few other guys making their debut that year. 
um, because of the exodus of players in the year before. Um, and it felt like slightly a new squad. Um, so really, really enjoyed it. I think one thing which was really good for me, I was, had a really good friend in Ian White who was a year above um, and obviously he was staying to a Masters. So he was a very good person to, to chat to and he would say, do that, you know, think about this, think about that um, in a very calming and, and helpful way. Um, so that was obviously a really, a really good thing as well. Um, but yeah, enjoyed it, enjoyed it. Very nervous at the time. Do you remember the, um, the varsity match right here? So like the quarter final of yeah, I do. against Loughborough? Because I think yeah, well, you scored, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, I did score. Yeah, um, that was incredible. Yeah, very, very exciting. Very fun. Um, the hype was obviously huge. I mean, because I was involved with the club as uh, that like vice club captain, I was obviously doing lots of organisation and stuff as well. Um, but then fortunately club captain was like, okay, you know, last week, focus on the hockey, step away from it, which was really good. Um, and that was incredible. That was, that's still um, a real highlight in terms of the hockey I've played, playing in front of um, a massive crowd, so loud. Um, you know, it was on a, a Wednesday night, I like Ben night games anyway, but it was just incredible. It was absolutely bottom. Um, and obviously against a, a quality Loughborough side, unfortunately, didn't quite win. Um, but a very, very exciting game. And that was a, a huge experience for me, a really good learning experience as well, because that was the first time, obviously, I'd played in front of a crowd of that magnitude. Um, and to get the goal was a, a huge confidence booster as well. And it was quite a passionate yeah. season, that, wasn't it? Because it was, um, yeah, it was a bit of a relegation <laughs> going on the whole yeah, season. It was quite an international league. It wasn't a uh, gentle one. It was not a gentle one at all. Um, Every game was so important and we were right down there. And I think it was only on the last game against um, potentially Indian Jim Gymkhana away. We, I think, did we win or we drew and that we stayed up on that. Um, uh, yeah, stress. So that, but that was, you know, that was a tough environment, um, but probably made us stronger in the long run because you had to have that resilience because, you know, we, some games we got thumped or we were consistently losing. You had to just write who have we got next? We've got to beat them. And going to Indian Jim Khanna last game of the season, knowing we have to win to keep that National League status is, is obviously massive. Um, and I think I cried after the game, actually. I don't think I told any of the lads that. But uh, <laughs> just like the outpouring of emotion when we when we did stay up. But um, but again, like it wasn't a particularly enjoyable one, but that was a quality experience having to, you know, really fight and to really work and, um, you know, have that bounce back ability and have that resilience to, to keep going in a tough season. Yeah, and I think playing those real high pressure games, it's like, yeah, it's a really rich learning experience. In many yeah, ways, if a bit stressful. Yeah, but, definitely. Um, but and I think I think stressful is good. I think you know that's it's a really conducive environment to learning. Um, you know, if you're if you're a forward and someone passes you the ball and you you miss it and it goes off the baseline, like, and you have to score, like that's a really big thing. So. I think, I, and then I now really like playing in high pressure games, um, potentially because I've had that exposure to it at Exeter because every game felt stressful. It felt like a lot. Um, I like playing in front of um, crowds and I want to, you know, play in important games, which matter where you have to win. Um, potentially it's got something to do with it, I don't know. Mm, and then after uni, so you've, you know, you've really worked your way up because... You know, from to go where you were playing at Oxford and even Futures Cup to be in like you know, next to one's National League team, especially how National League was set up then when there's only four leagues, you know, it's a top 40 teams compared to it's yeah. like 70 teams in National League now. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's a real good jump. Um, what did you do the year after uni? Um, so after uni, I, I guess I kind of had a classic gap year. I, I came back home to my parents' house to save a bit of money. I worked for um, six months and I went to Australia. So I spent um, half a year in Australia and played a hockey season there, which was an incredible experience. And hockey aside, that was a massive experience for me. I'd never really, I think I'd only ever flown to twice before um, and, you know, with people both times. So to fly by myself to Australia to move there um, was quite a daunting experience. So I remember getting to Australia, my phone was dead. Um, and I just didn't know what to do. Um, so that, that was a steep learning curve in terms of my maturity. 
um, generally. And then the hockey there was was awesome as well. I was very fortunate. I played with a, an amazing club called Hawthorne Hockey Club in Melbourne, in Victoria. And they really took me under their wing. Um, I made some fantastic friends there and some amazing memories. Um, and that was really, really exciting as well to, to have done that. I'm really grateful to have done that. Well, what was the standard of hockey like there? Was it equivalent to National League standard here? Or? Yeah, really good. I think um, there was quite a divide. So it was we were playing in the top league in the Victoria Premier League. I think the top few teams there would, would be in our Premier League. Um, wow, yeah. Pretty good teams. Um, the bottom teams would probably be... Um, what, what's the leagues now? Uh, like South Division, maybe. Um, a couple of teams at the bottom were pretty pants, but um, they well, relatively, um, they'd probably be a conference team. So you've got quite a range, but the top teams were quality. You know, there was a couple of internationals there, a couple of ex-internationals, or quite a few ex-internationals. Um, so some real hot hockey players there, yeah. And would, you, would it be like something you recommend? I know a few of our other mentors have uh, you know, gone to Australia or other countries. Um, yeah. would they, why would you recommend it? Yeah, 100% something I'd recommend. I think it's something I want to do again. I want to go to, to Europe to play hockey. Um, I think, first of all, it's really fun. I think you learn so much. You know, we're not even really talking hockey now. You learn so much about yourself. You grow as a person. You grow in confidence to have that independence. Um, you make a lot of new friends and you see a lot of um, incredible new places. I think the slightly different style of play wherever you go, which is really good to be exposed to. Um, you you have to prove yourself again. Obviously, no one knows who I am and I've got to make a name for myself and get into this squad. Um, I think when I was there, I probably, I didn't take the hockey as seriously as I, I had at uni. Um, potentially that was, I don't know, wanting a bit of like almost time off after uni, but I, I was traveling quite a bit. So I'd, you know, I'd go to um, Perth to, um, to visit Perth. So that obviously took me out for the weekend. Um, or I'd go and see um, Uluru and Red Centre. And so I, I didn't take it as seriously as I had at Exeter, which I don't regret because, you know, I'd never been to Australia before. I'd never travelled before. So those are things I really wanted to do. If I was to do another season now, I'd probably be more focused on the hockey. Um, but, you know, nonetheless, an incredible experience. And I learned a lot. And some of the guys I played with um, really, really taught me a lot. Mm. And what advice would you, you give to young players who you know, maybe don't completely crack it, you know, 12 to 18, but enjoy it, but they don't, you know, necessarily get to the yeah, I think junior system, but to, but they still want to develop. Like, it is, it is quite unusual. I mean, it's sad for me to say that, but it is quite unusual to see players really kick on after. Yeah, I think um, it is, but I think that's potentially for a, a mindset thing or a culture thing where yeah, kind of have, right, if you don't crack it from 12 to 18, you don't get into the England setup, you're not a player nationally, then, then you're done, which I think is is true. And I think I'm probably testament to that. I, you know, I didn't really have any um, exceptional coach. I didn't play a huge amount of hockey um, for a long time. And actually now I'm at the point where I'm 26 and I'm hoping to play Premier League. You know, I still want to get better. And I think I think you can. I think if your work ethic is there and your your mindset's right, then you certainly can get better. And I think it's you've just got to get beyond thinking, right, it's that 12 to 18 barrier because it's not, you know, it's absolutely not. And if you want to play National League, Actually, if you work hard and you're diligent and you pay your dues and work your way up, you probably you probably can get there if you've got that potential. Um, I think a lot of people, what I've seen from a lot of my friends who have done well in earlier stages, have they've just kind of been like, well, I've kind of done that stage of hockey, I just want to chill and enjoy it now, which is completely fair enough. I think for me, I've always felt like I've got more potential and more to give. So... I still want to kick on. I still want to push on. Um, I've been fortunate. I've been at Southgate the last four years and they've they've matched their ambitions and they've helped me grow. And I've got become a lot better player the last four years. And, you know, hopefully I can do that for another four years and, and kick on. Um, and actually, I think if you're willing to put yourself out there, you know, I was at um, a club and I felt like my hockey had stagnated a bit. And actually, I was at the point where I was kind of thinking, well, do I want to play? Do I want to have a year off and, and reevaluate? Um, went to Southgate and it was you know the best thing ever and actually made me um, love hockey again and made me a much better hockey player again. Um, I think 
work hard and, and do well in that 12 to 18 period is brilliant. But it's, you know, you, you hopefully will be playing hockey for another 16 years after that, potentially at a really good level. Um, so I think you'd be, you'd be silly to, to stop working and think you're done at 18 because for me, that, that was very much where things just started at 18. Um, and I know that can be the case for many other people as well. Yeah, I think that's a you know, fantastic example of um, you know, someone who can actually grow post-18. You know, we see it in football quite a lot. And there's loads of stories of yeah. the next person who got rejected when they were 15 or 16 or was playing lower leagues when they were 19, 20. Yeah. Um, not so much in hockey. So it's nice to you know, see someone who, who's really grown post-18. Yeah, um, I, think, I think the culture of hockey potentially is that England hockey like guys who have come through the system, um, which is fine, but that's not to say you can't be an excellent National League player by working your way up um, and by working on your game and and steady, you know, climbing the leagues and getting to get into National League Conference, South Div 1, North Div 1, whatever, Prem, um, that way. Which is often like, you know, a fantastic standard and you yeah. know, I can do better than a lot of, well, probably is better than a junior international team standard. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's yeah, fantastic to see him. And then, just as a final question, when you look back at your journey, is there like one top tip you give to um, junior performance players? Uh, one top tip. Um, I think recognize your opportunities um, is a big one, and then be thorough, work hard, be diligent with yourself after that you know if you if you say okay I want to be better at hockey what opportunities do you have to be better you might not have access to an astro um you might not have access to coaching but you might be able to go running um you might be able to um I don't know do some skills in your living room I had a friend who would do that and he did have crazy hands he could move the ball unbelievably um you could there's there's always something you could be doing so recognize what you do have um, it might be you've got a mate of a mate who can give you feedback, we can help you, whatever it is. Recognise your opportunities and then just work really hard. You know, it's cliche, but um, work really, really hard. I think you can, if you are fit, you're so much more likely to get into teams. If you um, know how to play a press, you're going to get into teams if your um, coach likes playing that press, you know. So there's, there's no substitute for, for working hard. Yeah, uh, and that's a really nice way to put it because it's you know, you've got to have your mind open to possibilities. Yeah, and obviously you've got to be able to execute on that you know opportunity possibility by yeah backing up with some proper hard work. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, but yeah, thank you for sharing all that, uh, Alex. It's, it's been um, great to hear your journey and uh, also fantastic to have you as a mentor on the yeah. program. Yeah, excited. Thanks, Jack.